Welcome everybody. I think this is pretty good. Uh, this is the Journeyman Collective for s- Season 1, Episode 2. Uh, we are here once more tonight. We are guestless. We are just roaming free along the pastures of conversation. See where we end up. Well put. Wow. Thank you. Did you write that? No. Ahead just of time? Just wow. thinking of it. It's just Inspiration trying to get my skills. Just in. Yes. Just trying to get those skills back in, get those... Um, yeah, go on. No, see? Now it's gone. Oh, it's see, gone. it was a fluke. So, it was running with it until it was a fluke. A cliff. Good. It was there for a moment. Well, it's good to see you, boys. <laughs> Gentlemen, what have we been up to? Anything you particularly want to cast a light on for us? But otherwise, as I said, we're going to have... Uh, y- is it Yanni? Yanni. Yanni Mayhem. So my friend, mm-hmm. unfortunately, couldn't make it tonight. Though. She's uh, pretty certain we will get her. Mm-hmm. Hopefully next week. So... Her background is pure mathematics. She's done theses in fractals. Um, and that's basically, uh, if you look at something, mm-hmm. um, and if you really quantify right down, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, this is the mathematical way you can actually measure these things. And it's this repeat set of numbers that go on and on and on. And sometimes for infinity so if you look at a fern, this is a this is an easy example. You see these ferns and they the big fronds come out. There it is. But then you look at the little ones coming off the big one, and then you look at the little one and they go in and in and in. And they're replicas of each other all the way out. And within this, and you find it through nature in shells and all sorts, you'll find uh, you know the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. It's this number, this yeah. uh, this incredible uh Golden ratio. Golden ratio, yeah. yep. So that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. and it, But she goes on to explain, I'll let her do it, but there's incredible this, this numbers and things that are happening in nature that you find absolutely everywhere and what they can use them for with technology, things that you're using here on the desk. Mm. It's just mind-blowing. Mm. And... um. There's a, have you seen this, um, there's this equation she was explaining to me and I've looked at it where they get this equation and they do the math and there's the answer and they get the answer and they feed it back into the start of that equation and this goes on and on and on and on for infinity. It just goes forever and they've actually... (sighs) How would you put it? So they've they've illustrated it. Mm-hmm. So each one of these numbers, they've just made a uh, like a, a picture for it. This yes. tiny little dot. Let's say a dot. For every time this equation happens, you put a dot. And then it goes over and over and over. And what you get after the supercomputers calculate it for as long as they possibly can is this incredible infinite of spiraling patterns fractal patterns yeah fractal yeah. patterns uh, theory like physicists and things call it like the fingerprint of god or something yes but the the implications of this equation are from as little as i could understand just extraordinary it's just a mind melting mm. the whole thing Mm. Anyhow, that's just one of the things Yanni wanted to talk about. Okay. That and just this, the weird nature of infinity itself. But she has this wonderful way of just explaining, just explaining it to the layman. Mm. And it's, anyway, look forward to that. It's beautiful. And she's an astronomer as well. So there's that whole connection between, I know, she and, and wonderful. arguably one of the greatest musicians, violinist, pianists I've ever met. Wow. Classically trained, and she's an artist. She draws these charcoal she pictures and looks. Bob? I think she's a savant. So what? Did she draw Bob? Yes, your dog. She drew Bob. Yeah, she drew Bob. That's my dog. Yeah, my dog Bob. My heart. Because I mean, the maths was impressive, but drawing Bob. Bob. Yeah. Anyway, like I'm a huge fan of her, and I do you find her somebody wait. who's incredibly like a type? Is she incredibly focused, or is it more a thing that kind of seemingly comes natural? So natural. She <sighs> she she just just seamlessly just apply she can just sit down and think something through if there's a problem it's just there's there's no rush of heart rate she will just calmly look through it and she'll get Mm -hmm. to the other side of it 
I mean, her background's mathematics. When she started astronomy, she had to delve into all sorts of uh, quantum physics-y stuff. Mm-hmm. And she just sat there in no time at all. She yeah. just seemed to understand how to do this. Um, uh, it's a, yeah, anyway, it, it's... Yeah. Um, I just sit back and listen to her and just talk to her and ask her and ask her and ask her questions and you know, just calmly explain it to me. But she has this really <laughs> wonderful way of taking this mm-hmm. this esoteric, mm. weird world of hers. Yeah, she sounds like a wonderful communicator. If she oh, she, and, she, and she's such a sweetheart too, you know. She's just a good mate. Good. You know, anyway. Oh, that so was, that I'm really pumped for that. Really, really pumped. Like when, what I, uh, sorry, I don't remember who said it to me first, but... The, the idea that if if you can actually understand something, you know, a concept, uh, anything, if you can understand it, then you should be able to teach it to a five-year-old or a six-year-old. Yes. Like there should be this ability to yeah. communicate it. Um, you know, break it down, synthesize it, and just communicate it very, very simply into the essence of really what you need to say. Um, and a lot of the time when you see the people, particularly online, that don't know what they're talking about you'll find them using massively long words and really complicated ways and just that sort of word salad jargon you know yeah. to get the message across and i love it when you meet people um like what i presume you know, it's going to be like yes where y- you can take these massive concepts that if i read them in a book i'd have no idea what they were talking about and then they'll sit there and go well you know you've seen a flower right well and then they, they have this amazing way of explaining it so simply and Absolutely. succinctly. I think, I think what a really good example of that, and I think a lot of people would know it, is the uh, space-time continuum. You know, mm-hmm. Einstein's, you know, space bends and things with gravity. I was gravity. Back to the Future, but same thing really, isn't it? Same thing. I'm lost. I, haven't, I don't know if I've seen that movie. Best movie <laughs> of all time. Oh, well, <laughs> big statement. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, point Break exists. So, well, I mean, the example I was talking about is I think it's a trampoline. There's a trampoline. Here's mm-hmm. the uh, space-time continuum. You know, it's all flat. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you stick a planet in the middle of it, mm-hmm. and that warps the whole situation down, and then you put a marble there, and it starts spiralling round and round and round and round. Now, that's a very easy conce- concept to go, yes, of course, there's incredibly intricate math and stuff behind it. But I think that's... I mean, The Simpsons did it fantastically on The Simpsons movie, or they went, there's an episode where they went 3D at the end of it, mm. and Homer went oh, into yeah. the 3D plane, yeah. and they, they were demonstrating space time. Wasn't that an amazing yeah, That was episode. great. It was like, oh, what a g- fantastic demonstration of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, wonderful. It would be about 20 years ago they <sighs> poured that thing out. Well, they're like 24 seasons now or something. They're in the 20s at least. Mm. Are they? Yeah. Still going. Wow. Still strong. The Simpsons. I remember seeing... Um, I think it was War of the Roses in the 80s. I was only a little fella. Mm. Yeah. War of the Roses. Uh, I think so. War of the Roses. It's a movie. Yeah, but why do you mention and that? Bef- that? Yeah, well, before the movie started, yes. on the um, VHS, mm-hmm. yes. popped it in. Yes. Let's sit down, watch it. There's The Simpsons. It was like, I think it was one of the first, first <laughs> things they did. No, hey, <laughs> shut up. So it was. It was this. T- it was this clip. Your brain just pulled any reference that you had. At and it. Bart Simpson <laughs> yeah. was pulled into the principal's office yeah. um, because he, I don't know, he did something. He spat chewing gum or something. Then he spat it out, and, and it was just so shocking, very benign um, for today's you know standards. Yeah. But I still remember watching that. It just blew my mind. And they're all sort of dodgy, you know. They're all quite well illustrated now. But then it was just crap but it was so just i felt privileged to see this just this this left hand turn in culture right there little p little p just uh, wrapping his hands ready for war of the roses and then simpsons and this shock eight-year-old watching war of the roses explains a lot (laughs) sorry boys i can't ride my bike Um, (laughs) (laughs) i got a lot on I think my flashback to VHS that I always remember, same similar thing, VHS, grandma used to tape a lot of shows. That was the main way she would go through all the murder mysteries. And so for some reason I, I thought I had something taped on something, popped it in, and then before the taping of it, it was an episode of ALF. Oh. But I hadn't seen it. Or we watched this, sorry, when I, I was in my teens, but it was already kind of, you know, VHS was on the way out by then. 
but I hadn't seen a VHS or ALF for another 10 years at least. And I was like, oh, oh my God, great nostalgia. Of course, ALF, Alien Life Form. Uh, Gordon, of course. Gordon Shumway. Well done. Gordon Shumway from the planet of Melmac. Wait, hang on. Yeah, that's, on. His, that's his name. So, uh, yes. are you saying this mm. event mm. that happened mm. at your grandma's mm. house? Because mm. we're talking about VHS th- like throwbacks. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. what I'm asking. Was this the first time you've seen Alf? No, that was just the thing that I just drew to then being like VHS. That was a great memory for me. Like Simpsons for you mm. and War of the Roses. Ah, right. So you like to tie things Ada? together. Jump in, mate. Can I say, though, finish that, it was the episode, it was a bit scary, because <laughs> it had giant cockroaches, because they were Melmachian cockroaches. And so, of course... Are you sneezing? No, I'm trying to think of the dad. <laughs> the dad's name. It was like Harry or something quite benign or simple, and I just can't, I could, nearly had it. It was nearly there, but I just couldn't, and I had a bit of a, a tick. Ah, yeah. right. But so they, the Willie, so like Willie, that was his name. Wait, this is an elf? Yes. So, Hawk, right, okay. Yeah, there, there's my dog, Olaf, bark in the background. I'm amazed have, that you can remember the details, the names. These are important so things that I throw into my brain instead of instead of fractal formations yeah. that explain the mysteries of the universe. Malmachian Man, we trivia. We really peeled away from that conversation quickly, didn't we? <laughs> wow. Well, we're bringing it back to our level, mm. at least my level in this section of the world. Yeah. So someone I was going to ask you to mention mm. that. What movie, when you were a little kid, yeah. just scared the crap out of you? I've got one, but would you like to go ahead? No, no, you go. Um, Return to Oz. Okay. I g- yeah, drawing elaborate. Right? Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so I know, Wizard I of Oz, movie. Yeah. we're all aware of. Wizard of Oz, Dorothy yes. gets on her little situation. Gets on her. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big gust of wind. A lot of things happen. She wakes up. Yeah, you were there. You were there. You were mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Ah, you know, That's the end. The story ends. That's now, the, yeah, oh, okay, yep. this is the sequel. So because of this event Sorry, that's happened. We have to get you to recap movies because that was incredibly efficient. Mm. You yeah. There, that, you're, whoosh, done. That really I was. know. Loved it. The waffle some people do. So that. Now the sequel. Dorothy, they've... The start of the movie, she is in a sanitarium. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. She's not well because, mm-hmm. well, all these people have just... She did She's just woken behind up the curtain. And she's gone, look, I've gone to another world. Mm-hmm. I, I, this and this happened, mm-hmm. Tin Man, that mob. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've gone, well, you're clearly not well. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they're... they're They've strapped her into this bed and started giving her electroshock therapy. Really zapping her. Okay. This is a kid's movie. Um, yeah, so she's... When was this? Like, uh, Wizard of Oz is oh, that great 70, transition for, from oh, black and 50, white to colour. But they did the trick. Kids movie? What? Return to Oz? Oh, it's not a... It sounds a bit... It's not yeah. like an adult film that your parents were just like, oh, it's the sequel to Wizard of Oz, it'll be fine. I don't know. It's actually Shutter Island with Leonardo DiCaprio. But it's <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, it's Wizard of Oz. Well, uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. So, yeah, so she, you know, she gets zapped and all that because mm. she's clearly very unwell. I think it was about, I, I'm going to guess it was late 80s that they made this return to Oz. Yeah. And I, Oz, I remember, I and then she it. runs out, at, she escapes from the, the sanitarium. Mm-hmm. And there's, I think she jumps in a river and it's raining, it's awful and everything. Gets washed away, wakes up downstream. Where am I? Back in Oz. And it's all busted up and not too crash hot. However, the rest of the stories I could have, I can manage. I, I, I could manage as a little fella, but the start of it, this, I didn't know what electroshock therapy was. No, so I should you at that age. Yeah, and I knew Dorothy. I grew up with the girl. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> good eh? <laughs> so here's my Dorothy. Yeah, little Petey's do- <laughs> just little Petey now. Little That's where dot. we are. Yeah. So little Petey's Dorothy, and all of a sudden she's dot, there dot, and zapped, and it is dark and it's horrible, and that yeah. So that stuck mm. with me. Anyway, right. don't let me elaborate or anything. No, that's right. Go on. <laughs> what anyway. was yours? What the mo- oh movie? 
uh, that were scary. For me, it wasn't. I can't think of a particular movie. I do have very strong feelings that of the Muppet Show, the men that were in the life are uh, full scale Muppets. Mm-hmm. So they weren't puppets anymore, but they were the puppeteers in the full fo- full size outfits. So just people. Yeah, well, it's dressed, no, no, street, dressed it? up in the monsters. Generally, they were the big monster guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so that would just freak me because I know they're guys in there or females, but they're creepy because they look like a monster. And the, just the the disconnect with Muppets were fine because I know they're, they make believe their motions aren't as realistic as a person, but yet now this thing that actually looks quite smooth and as a person, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't like that. Jo- little Josh was a little too oh. close to home. Yeah, yeah Uncanny Valley. Was Something was ticking off in the back of the head. Little, well, he, you know. You're implying that he's, he's a m- person in a monster suit? No, I think he was just saying it was a bit too real for me. Oh, I thought like, well, he, you know, he's he could see Muppets as, you know, not his reality. He was, well, let's say, on the sideline of reality. <laughs> <laughs> However... Do your own then branding, he can start, fine. you know, he starts drawing parallels between his own life and these 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 Muppet type creatures, and then mm-hmm. we've got a real situation on our hands, Ado. Uh-huh. <sighs> but you, Ado. <sighs> Mine's is really simple. Um, <laughs> chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that guy that was trying to steal the children. We love you, Chitty, oh, chitty, chitty Bang Bang. You know, the, you know the guy that showed up with the little cage and he was trying to entice the I've children never seen out. It. Oh, never seen it. Never seen it. Yeah, they they arrive. I haven't seen trash. But they're in this city and there's a, a this creepy looking dude that shows up with a bunch of lollies trying to entice children to come out to him and then when they come out he throws them in the back of a wagon and steals them. The lolly shop attendant and Willy Wonka. You mean that guy? It's what? similar. <laughs> I have is Dick Van Dyke Chitty Chitty the driver of Chitty Chitty? Is he in that? Uh, Am I, I totally feel like it's not. No. I feel like my brow furrowing again. I'd have to check on it, but I don't think so. I think it's okay, a, yeah, I don't think a so genuine anyway, British actor. Yeah, okay. No, uh, Willy Wonka at the beginning of that is that creepy guy in the lolly store. Do they do a song in there? Oh, but no, he's the and guy he who's does. he's working for the other no, 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 chocolate not, company. That's not... Um, no, that's just a weird-looking guy. I know who you're talking about, uh, Slugworth, or well, the guy saying about Slugworth, but that's his assistant. Oh, yeah, no, the shopkeeper no, does shopkeeper's just, yeah, just does. a bit of a seedy-looking dude that you would kind of go, there's a, the stereotype of a, like a, a kid uh, botherer, you know, a pedophile. Well it's a bit, Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. It, was, it just had that weird vibe, and that's a very, like, simplistic way of doing it, of course, because they're just going to look like a dude. But Just the bloke selling that, the chocolates yeah. to the kids. Yeah, he does sing a very creepy song. And the way he comes across, it's a little bit... Because it's a a musical, it has a bit of a flair to it. Mm. I've seen that movie a lot. I cannot put my finger on what you're talking about. No, because you don't really... When you're a kid, you don't really pay attention to it. Because the movie starts with him singing and talking about chocolate and stuff. And then Charlie comes in. You're like, oh, Charlie. And then you you start paying attention from about there. I think think Charlie's wandering the streets. He's working three jobs. All the parents are living in bed. All the grandparents are... uh, Incapacitated, they can't walk anymore. Charlie's working. Oh, dude, he's yeah, a. Charlie yes. works his. Butt off. He, where, yeah, yeah. What's his? What's his doing? What's up? What's what going doesn't on he with do? Charlie? He does a paper route, doesn't he? Yeah, he delivers least. mail or something. Like he's he, working long hours. Oh man. yeah, he yeah. does do the paper route. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and then what? Like he, he's just working. Like it just seems like he is the breadwinner for that family. Yeah. There's no father that we've seen. He helps his mum out. His yeah. mum is got doing the laundry. I don't think he's the father. No, I don't think he's in it. Because the grandfather's the other one in bed. I think they've got both grandparents in the bed. I feel like both the parents. Yeah, uh, that's right. I always took sure. it as being grandparents. Pretty sure. Yeah, no, no. But I'm pretty sure both his parents are in the kitchen when he's um, when he's talking to them. And they're the ones that... Okay. I, th- I feel like the father's off working, mum's off working. That's what you assume. The grandparents are in the he bed. Might just be I didn't pump. think the dad was in the picture. Yeah, that's what I, I thought, thought either. Was. No, I didn't think so. But unless that old guy... But no, he says uncle, doesn't no, he? No, no, not the... He's definitely not one of the guys in the bed. Okay. Who are... Do they ever establish who all the people are in the bed? I Surely thought, they do. I just thought grandparents. It's, it's grandparents. It's like grandpa It's the two Joe sides of the grandparents. Or, yeah. And then there's... Oh, both sides. Yeah. Maybe and it's dad's... Like, Dad's just not in the picture. I just love the fact that old mate has been in bed for, you know, potentially 30 years. Mm. <laughs> and muscle and atrophy is fine. He's like, oh, I can't do anything. Can't do a thing. Can't, no, no, c- couldn't possibly. And it's like, do you want to come to a chocolate factory? Oh, yeah. Wins a tour <laughs> of the factory. Let's do it. <laughs> Where do I go? I yeah. think I could probably dance. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would be, and I would feel. No one asks questions. Can you imagine the feeling of that, of Chucky and his mum mm. after all the work he's been doing for this louse when he's hopping around the room? I'm just well, he's well, got his granddad there. The they can go and have fun. I'm just saying, if, if you guys, like, I've, I've spent quite a bit of my adult life when I've been injured. Mm. And, you know, you end up laying there on, on a bed. Yeah. For, we're talking days. Mm. Still, at the end of that period of time, I struggle to get up and walk, let alone hop up and do a song and dance number. Sure. <laughs> yes. Right. It's pretty amazing. I'd be asking some questions about the old fella. Well, yeah. Movement. That great part where... Um, movement. Oh, God. <laughs> Wonka. <laughs> oh, right. Wonka, the actor. Mm. Why am I going blank now? Please go, Aiden. The actor oh, is uh, Wilder. Gene, Gene, Wilder. Gene Wilder. So I believe the story was the director didn't, he just wanted him to walk down decrepitly to the gate, yes. open the gate, and that was it. And he was like, uh, I've got this idea, can we do this? Mm. He's like, nope, nope, just do the thing, do the thing. And supposedly there's a lot of takes, do the thing. And he goes, fine, finally, yeah, do on. your thing. Mm. And he did the thing where he got his cane caught. Yes. That was an amazing somersault, pops up. Mm. And that's the one they use, obviously. Good. And I, I, I remember that being uh, uh, Gene Wilder saying that in some interview. You're, you're very, very close to. Are you telling me Gene exactly Wilder's a liar? Right. Um, what happened was Gene Wilder. He, he read the script. Yep. And he said, "When um, when Wonka arrives, I want to do this." Yep. And the director went, "Oh, I'm not so sure about that." And he went, "If you won't let me do it, I'm not doing the movie." Okay. And the director went, "Okay." So a bit of an a-hole, really. he came out and he did it. Yeah. Then he portraying Gene Wilder as a bit of a no. The, when he was asked by the director why he wanted to do that, he mm -hmm. said, "Because from that point on, the audience won't know whether to trust anything Wonka does." If that's a, if that's the true story, that's a way yeah. better story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's okay. that's the truth to it. That's okay. that's he was wanting the audience to have that thing. Of yeah. Everything Wonka does, you're like, is that good? Is that bad? Is you know, and, and that's what you have during the entire film. You can mm. never quite place where Wonka sits. He always does his own thing. He de certainly maims and nearly kills multiple children, so he's a little bit washy on the whole ethical point. Mm. Yeah, he's, But he is wonderful. That monologue that he goes through in the tunnel, it's one of my favourite scenes. I heard there was cinema. something behind that that was a little bit off the cuff, like it wasn't scripted. As, um, oh. <sighs> I can't remember what it was. I, I'm not going to comment, but mm. uh, the monologue in the tunnel, or yeah, yeah the, the 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 all the weird stuff going on, real creepy bit of it. It was um, there was something more to it. I, I'm is not sure. It pouring? Yeah, is a hurricane a blowing? Mm. Not a speck of light is showing further. Danger must be growing. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, something, something, something. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was filming some of my buddies watching a video where they were talking about the, the film that we were working on. Um, and in the video they were saying about the fact that Matt Damon had just arrived, you know, he was in Sydney, he was, oh. they'd seen him filming on the movie. When they said, and it's all stunties, they're sitting there watching mm -hmm. the video. As soon as they said, Matt Damon is found in Sydney, all six of the stunties went, Matt Damon, <laughs> just perfectly on cue. I love it. That's how he's known now. Do you think Such an intelligent, talented mm -hmm. man. And now whenever you hear his name, you can't help but think, Matt Damon. I think that really resonates for Australian people. I don't get the vibe that Americans maybe our age would respond the same way as Australians our age for some reason. I don't know why. I don't have anything to verify that or back it up. <laughs> it's just a feeling I have. It's just a baseless opinion. Totally. That's very good. That's genius. Well, have you seen the trailer for the um, Suicide Squad? Like he's wearing like a, a weird, they mentioned a toilet for the head. He's got no. some weird, like the first one was so badly re received. Um, and this is now done by James Gunn, who did mm -hmm. the Galaxy movies, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Yeah. So, I th yeah, it's definitely got that feel to it. It's got the sort of retro music to it, a bit of funk in the soundtrack and it's stylized and it's got a quippy sense of humor. So mm. I totally, uh, I'm on board. Plus there's a, a man sized shark walking around eating people. Mm. So that's a bit unsettling. <laughs> that guy, that what's, what are all those things sticking out of his head? I don't know. They obviously make him think better. Obviously. I mean, obviously. Wow. It's on okay. his head. And then, oh, that's right. He's the peacekeeper. 
Yeah. Who's the peacekeeper? Uh, the shark? No, no. Um, oh, the the Cena. Razor fist. Dude. Cena. John Cena. Yep. What movie is oh. this? This is the new. This is Suicide Squad Two. Oh, I haven't seen. Don't see it. Number it. Two. Nah, nah. It's not really recommend. Uh, is there? A, is there a director's cut of Number One? It's actually really good. Probably soon enough. It seems to be a popular move now to reinvest millions of dollars into uh, an alternate cut. Mm. Just I, there's a really, really great, um, really great stunt that one of the guys that I'm working with at the moment, where um, the way he described it was, he said there was a whole bunch of young stunt guys, a whole bunch of older stunt guys, mm-hmm. and it was kind of like, he goes, when the older stunt guys, it was showing them that I can still hang, and you know, the younger stunt guys, it was to show them, you know, what's up. Um, and he turned to the director and he went, so all right, what do you need from this? And he's like. Basically, I just need you to land on your head. And he goes, "What, like, like a taco?" Or like, he goes, "No, no, right on your head." You Sorry, like what's a taco? A, yeah, what's a taco? Uh, so taco is basically you land, sort of. How do I do this? Do you bend like you land um, upside down on your head, but your kind of body is bent? As so well? you land head, yeah, that makes your shoulders first, but then you bend oh, in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So oh yeah. yeah, okay, I'm with you. you know, so you so kind of landing, I'm on, landing the back on the back of your back, back of your shoulders, but then my feet will come down and hit mm. the ground behind me. That's what oh, what I call a taco. Okay. He went beyond the taco and landed on his head. Full dog And it's awesome. Just, and, and not to mention the fact he did it on the first one. And the director was like, ah, yeah, great. I'm still going to need another one. Um, and he's like, okay. So he backed it up and did it again. And it's, it's really, really oh, This cool. is in the clip. It's in, um, what was the sequel that just had Margot Robbie, um, Birds of Prey? Yep. Is that it? Birds of Prey. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think yeah, it's independent. He did it in that. There's a moment where uh, Margot Robbie's character throws a baseball bat at one of the bad guys and he basically takes the baseball bat to the face and gets flipped up in the air and lands oh, straight okay. on his head. So at least he's doing it from ground-ish level. He's not... Oh, it's from, it's from the ground. Yeah, I mean, he's standing position. No, no, no. He's running forward. So he oh, throws okay, himself yep. up and I'd say he's yeah. at about head height. Mm-hmm. When he's horizontal, and Ooh. then from head height comes down on top of his head, and it's <laughs> so as a stuntman, awesome. what are you doing? To of course you condition your body, you are more flexible, you are used to doing motions and and hits that repetitively. But how do you practice a thing like that and get that where you're falling in a certain way to not obviously damage yourself? What well, are the things that go? Into where do that? you learn to taco? <laughs> so yes. mm. everything is, um, it, well, it's, it's like learning any skill. It's um, crawl, walk, run. So you it's start, you start with a crawl. Specific yeah. adaptions of imposed demands. Yeah. 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 Start with a big, thick mattress. <laughs> really thick, really thick mat. Yep. Um, and then you learn the technique on that big mat where mm-hmm. even if you landed on your head, you'd kind of be okay. Is this in the uh, stunt community called the princess and the pea? Sort of <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> Never in my life have I heard that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, but yeah, you know, you'd learn it on that, mm-hmm. and then once you got that dialed in, then you start making the mat smaller and smaller and smaller okay. and smaller. And I mean, he did it to about mm, about an inch thick EVA foam. Okay, so a bit, a bit of padding on the. F- oh wow. Okay, of course. I feel. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like though it would almost you could teach yourself some really bad lessons if you're doing it on a big mm. thick mat you're not really understanding the possible ramifications yes of doing it no. on a thin mat but that's why you slowly work it down so you would yeah so you'll yeah. alter as you go and you start to get a feel for nope yeah. so the first is one is really just, is just moment. so that you can get yourself into the right body position have because it's a full commitment have you oh yeah 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 really do you remember your fart first my taco? <laughs> my first taco. Did you fart while you first taco? taco would have been a stunt gym. I missed that. <laughs> I thought you said, "Did you fart when you tacoed?" <laughs> just sounded like just that. sorry. Go on. No, it just would have been at stunt gym. I, I don't remember the exact night, but one of those nights, I would have been practicing and done my first taco. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, I wasted your time. So I remember years ago talking about doing something like that with padding, trying to progressively get used to that motion. Years ago, uh, I went to a, a parkour session. Mm-hmm. Uh, did like a, you? Totally. You'd be yeah. good at that. Well, I, what I did at Palm Beach, I used to love doing, and I still do it if I ever get down there, is I would do a run around the lighthouse base. Yeah. So you start it from the car park, run along the beach. Usually you would go about two hours before sunset, an hour before sunset, because it's like a 40-minute run, rock mm-hmm. hop around. Yeah. And so you do a lot of just always in motion, jumping down, just yeah, leaping, yeah. scrambling, trying to always keep momentum. 
So yeah, yeah, I like that stuff, but I was never really great mm. at it. But I went, oh, I go to this parkour session, okay? And they ran it incredibly well. They were all just volunteer guys who yeah. obviously were good at parkour. And this was probably the more parkour craze time. Like it was a bit more of a thing. I, yep. Hadn't become normalised in cinema yeah. yet. Yeah. It was still a bit of a, hey, you look at this guy doing this stuff. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and so I did that and we were doing rolls. So we're doing some other stuff, doing like mm-hmm. vaulting up and, okay, okay, time for the thing now where it rolls. So right. if you're doing any jump down or you want to absorb that, energy oh i see you want to dissipate that energy through momentum and absorption as mm-hmm. well and the roll is a great way of doing that right and it grass is fine so could you do a roll let's do it okay cool great and you get used to the grass now they're like okay now this is where you'll learn all your bad techniques because the grass isn't telling you what you're doing wrong yeah mm. so now do it on the concrete Ugh. But they weren't doing it so we were jumping down anywhere we were just literally from a standing or wherever just try and just do a roll on the concrete. And it's it's a bit a little bit hesitant, but I'm like, yeah. okay, fuck it, good, do it. And any time you would be slightly off or your spine, I was hitting my tailbones. Yeah. Like on either side kind yeah. of thing. There were little bits of hippish sort of areas. Yeah, yeah. Just couldn't do it. It yeah. felt great on the grass. I was like, I'm caning this thing. I mean, really and then I just caned myself on the uh, the concrete and had nice bruises afterwards. It was Ugh. just couldn't get it. I just uh it. just quickly sent you a YouTube link to, okay. uh, to one of my mates who's a uh, a parkour expert because oh. I mean like parkour um, you know back in the day was just um, for me and my mates was just jumping off stuff because I mean we we came up watching all the CKY videos and excuse me uh, jackass and all that type of stuff yep where they used to just find really high things and jump off them so <laughs> my friends and I went out and did that like we I remember going to the um, I think it's a telephone exchange or something in Woodford and we found out it had a pretty high roof and we climbed up on that and we were jumping off it. And mm. it was one of the, what are they called a pitched roof? Mm-hmm. What are they called? Just the flat roof. Like that. Anyway, cool. working our way up that jumping a further and further, roof. And further. Yeah, whatever it's called. I don't know. Sounded good. Um, and we just kept working and working and basically you kept going until you broke your feet. Talking about positive things, they're going to make Dread a TV show. That's an amazing segue. And there's mm. an amazing segue. I'm going that's to that's a slice to learn. Is that right? Or is that the Doctor original was? Yeah, that's the only one. That's the one, well, the original, I'm that's the one you don't want to I talk about. Anyone, but that's yeah. a fun one. Like if you want to go, what's a bad, well, good '80s movie, '90s movie? Dread. The remake was actually it was pretty. That's hot. what I'm talking about. It's pretty. The hot. Dread with Carl Urban uh, from Lord of the Rings, yeah. the Knights of the Mount, the the the, the, the valley the area, the 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 horsemen of somewhere. The they're horsemen. They, well, they're horsemen <laughs> of a plane. That's what their name is, but of, of the area that they. We are the horsemen in. of the valley area. <laughs> <laughs> and of he's a ex- non-specific. He's been valley. <laughs> no, very specific. Yeah. But that like, one. That one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they've been Let's shunted from their land. So not the mountains. Yes, that's part of the valley area. So he's in red. The valley he's and in, the mountains. Um, and a, on a the good sci-fi show that wasn't before that they only did mm. two seasons. Anyway, he's great. New Zealand actor. Dread is a fantastic remake. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Check it out, Pete. That's got in the second uh, All right. segment there. Start her up. He started up. Um, but they're making, they haven't made a sequel. It was one of those remakes where we went, oh my God, you did a, a fantastic job. Like, I want more. And they hadn't done do anything yeah. with it for a long time. Oh, that's a, and then that's I a heard dystopian sort it of is. thingy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, they're, yeah. They're called Mega Cities. Oh. So, we, you know, we're approaching that soon. We'll get there. It's only dystopian. That's, it's just Sydney. One day we'll get there, guys. And so this one, I just think it just localizes into an apartment block. It does a really good job of just containing the action, and Carl Urban just pulls it off fantastic. Anyway, I believe they're doing a TV show. So good. and St- St- Stallone wanted to be in it, I think, and they were like, uh, "Matey, no, like no, thanks." But I think he possibly is doing a cameo. But you know who should do a cameo? Rob Schneider. You know, Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider, isn't he yeah, the dude that Rob was Schneider. like... Yeah. Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. So it just shows up right at the end when Dred's about to kill someone. Goes, you can do it! <laughs> <laughs> See, but, I don't yeah, like the... I don't cool. know, there's something about mm. movies and I really need good lighting everywhere. In my life, in my movies, everything. So that sort of cold, dystopian mm-hmm. colour that they... That blue lighting, I don't know what you call it, Ada, you might know. 
Mm. Well, there's a cooler it's color depressing. tone. Depressing, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's right. trying to yeah. evoke it's, it's this kind of sucks a blue grading kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. I, I I just can't well, enjoy a movie. That great much example. You're not going to have Star Trek where it's got the uh, lights. Uh, it's got the anamorphic light streaks that are very mm -hmm. nice. So JJ Abrams loved to throw the old like anamorphic like streaks in. Mm -hmm. Very positive, very light, like you're okay, talking about. Right. Mm. You're not going to throw that in into something like this where it's gritty wow. and dirty and you know you death is all around. They've just skinned somebody and thrown them mm. off an apartment block. Have you seen yeah. The Raid? No. Oh, oh, I haven't seen any movies. Incredible. I'm really no, behind no action film. Yeah. It's okay. an hour and a half of just kung fu martial arts. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not uh, please don't. Uh, sure. Yeah, what sort of martial arts is Sorry. It? Yeah, no. I'll, I won't be the <laughs> arsehole. I don't like car yeah, chases. Yeah, yeah, I don't like okay. gun shootouts. I don't like yeah. fight scenes. So all of cinema, you kind of a bit yeah. Poo -poo look, I'm really struggling to. Which is a bit of a bummer, really. I mean, you do say that. I don't. I don't career. mean that. <laughs> Basically, your whole yeah, career, my whole yeah. thing, everything I do, Pete's like, uh, yeah, I could be you. I don't care. Well, you I said you're watching some um, Alfred Hitchcock, and that's. There's a lot of suspense. There's murder. There's a, uh, well, I watched Psycho. There was no none of that. Psycho doesn't have murder. I didn't say murder. I said oh, gunfights. Okay, fights, you mean, oh, sure, sure. Uh, car chases and what else was there? Explosions. I'm sure you would put into that. Oh, movie. CGI. What a dreadful thing. I just no. I don't like yes. an explosion. Sure. I just see. I just see a great big CGI event in a movie, and I just feel like. What about a real explosion? You've just. You've just thrown... What about Apocalypse Now? Just you've got buy the a good writer, you know? Mm. To, I don't know. This, this The money's going to this these moments that oh, yeah, I just... Definitely. I don't care about. And that's totally valid because it is. I mean, I would agree. It's it's like a... Mo okay, here's a great example. I watched Shin Godzilla the other night. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Shin Godzilla, wonderful Godzilla. Of course it's, it's like going to be awful. No, it's wonderful. No, no, no. Really? Shin, Shin Godzilla. Oh wait, is, is this not a, the new one? No, it's oh, a 2016. I was thinking of Kong vs Godzilla. How silly! Yeah, Go on. it's a Western one. This is now. a Japanese one. Yes. So, and it has the original uh, gentleman who did the score from the original Godzillas, and also Neo Genesis was a fabulous anime. You see my interest mm. here, Pete. I'm I being can very see your eyes are here. beaming. It's beautiful, <laughs> and. That's a thing where bureaucracy wins. Of course. You know how you over, overcome God incarnate, Godzilla? Bureaucracy. Paperwork. That's how you do <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, you don't need an explosion. Don't need to send the Americans in mm. to bomb it. No. Nope. You oh. make sure we get all this stuff made. You get scientists in there researching how we're going to get 50 plans underway. I don't know. We're going to put the paperwork in now. They're going to run production to 120%. We're going to pump out two, 670 kilos of coagulant that's going to freeze Godzilla. That's how we're going to overcome Godzilla. Wow. That and the fact he couldn't hold a pen. <laughs> Can you imagine pitching that idea that way the way you've just done it? <laughs> well, it's... it's uh, so, but, holding a pen? Yeah. Paperwork. Oh, yeah, like a rubber stamp and yeah, like pen. You have and, to sign this And form. the old-fashioned the old like, accounting... <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Visor. I don't know what Godzilla. that did. What did the visor do? Block the fluorescent light. I don't oh. know. The accountants had them. They did, didn't they? Yeah, they but they were slightly clear, greenish, yeah, green. green. That's green right. Ones. Hmm. Accountants and, also, and bookies. That's about the only people that have ever had them. I reckon it probably is. They have to see well, but they have a lot of light coming down, and they just block it a bit. Yeah, they always, they they know they have a problem with sleeves because they've always got their fingers rolling their sleeves and up, got a waistcoat, and their sleeves are rolling down. They've got to hold it up. Just touching. You don't want to get your sleeves caught in that ch -ch machine. No. So it's that. It's, it's a one-arm bandit. There's not, there's not enough things that do that anymore. You think not about even one-arm bandits do it. Did you ever get to play the old card machines? That's what I'm saying. When you when you what? when you sign when you pay for something now, you go. It used to be just the card machines. What do you mean oh, card no. machines? Well, that's what they were called. You know the actual card machines where you like, okay, nowadays I, I go in Let's, with my phone and sorry, I scan guys. my thing. Back in the day, you'd give them a credit card and they'd put it up the table and they'd go. Sh -sh -sh Hang on. That thing? <laughs> I think he's real in a sin. I've got it. I'm, I'm Do you remember that? Wait, everyone's coming at me. Ada, you go first. The the machine. Go. So, sorry, you keep referring to card machines as it's some common thing. What the hell is a card machine? Why do you mean card well, he's, machine? He's talking about poker machines. 
But so, how, why are you saying card machine? Because right. they got cards on it. Okay, thing so would, originally... An they, ATM they would be the have, closest thing I would have thought a card machine So was. you'd have... I'm the, actually talking about a card machine, but we'll let Pete go first. So a card machine, like a poker machine. So you'd sit down in front of what we now call uh, a poker machine. What we because now it's poker. call it. Well, it's poker and cards, but some people... Well, I, I grew up okay, and so my uncle had a pub in Barrel. Anyway, moving on, and the card machine was there. And you pull the lever, you get your hand, depending on how good the hand was, was how much money you may or may not have won. Poker machine. I know how poker machines work. Right. That's not in question. Okay. The question was, why is it called a card machine? No one's ever called it a card machine. You can't play Peter. poker no. without cards. Everyone else calls it a poker yes, machine. It's, it's a, a card machine. Okay, so the connection is a poker machine. Okay, fine. But but I, there I was, you go. Fair enough. But well, it was just a way of just... just like, uh, the uh, word play is wonderful. I love it. Yes. But I remember... I'll, uh, I'll retract myself from this whole scenario. But, it's okay. I got, I got the connection there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't was that long like, ago. I was working in retail and, you know, power goes out. Can't take any transactions. Woman wanted to pay it's with free, credit card. It's free, but guys card. just grab it. Just take it. wanted to pay with credit card. And the younger staff member that I was supervising at the time was like, what are we going to do? Well, we don't have electricity. How do you pay with And I went, we'll just do it the way you used to. And she went, what do you mean? And I pulled out the card machine from underneath the counter. And she went, what the hell is that thing? And I went, look. And I put the graph paper in it. And I said, oh, can I grab yeah. a credit card? The person standing there didn't even know what I was doing. And I took the credit card, put it in the machine, and did the old ching ching. Mm. And it did the carbon thing, and mm -hmm. I got them to sign it, and I was like, "There we go. They've just paid with credit card." The young lady was mind blown. She was like, yeah. "And I, I said to her, no, that's whenever I went into a store, and my mum and dad wanted to pay with credit card. That yeah. was the standard way it was done. Oh, it was for the vast majority, probably credit. Or oh, maybe not now. How long have credit cards been around for? Uh, Diners Club was the first, wasn't it? In the seventies, oh, sounds about right. Eighties, because it was travellers. It was. It was to take over from Traveller's Tex. Yeah, that's true. Traveller's Tex. Traveller's Tex. Traveller's Tex. Traveller's Tex. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a nice time here. <laughs> Just an intimate chat between the boys. No guests today. It was lovely. It uh, was lovely. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, of course, you can follow us on YouTube and just, you know, watch the, the Journeyman Collective there on, you know, youtube.com forward slash Journeyman Collective. Uh, Patreon has a pretty good slathering of opportunities, I think. I think we've got some nice little bits to choose from. Give us a like, click subscribe. Uh, no, I'm not going to go through that. Like, if people want to do that, that's fine. I don't want to try and say, do you know, it's, yes, I want it's, to. sure, and it's a good. He definitely wants and it. And of to. course, it, the metrics work, but it just, everyone says it, and I don't really want to have to sort of. You're both looking at me. <coughs> oh, Peter, fight amongst yeah. yourselves. On your own free like, will, people, subscribe. press it if you do. Worst outro ever. No. No, this is <laughs> it's bickering. honest, it's forthright, it's to the point, it shows who we are. Yeah. Right? None of this pre-formatted, like and subscribe, press that button, you know, just jam down on it. No, it's fine. If you want to put a bad review, put a bad review. Yeah. yeah that's okay. Review, yeah. That means review. you listen to it and you had an opinion. That's worthy. Mm. Okay. So I'm fine. Uh, Patreon, I think we've got some pretty good tiers, I think. I'm pretty proud of the things that we're offering there. Oh, um, that's right. Look at smug mug. Smug mug? Mm. Oh, yes. smug mug. I think that's... Uh, oh, a smug mug. That's on the $10 tier. That's a $10 Australian now, you mind you. If you're an American, you're getting better value. Yeah, I think we're up so at about cheaper. 67 US cents today. <laughs> Maybe 60. Yeah, no, so I think uh, three right. consecutive payments, uh, you get a, a smug mug. Do you still read the paper? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. They're all Murdoch papers now, anyway, Aiden. What are you talking about? Yeah, true. We're going to oh. a wonderful oligopoly running in Australia, Murdoch and a handful of other media distributors. But anyway, this is supposed to be our outro, Aiden. So sorry, hi, Jake. Right. Um, that's pretty much going to do it with us. Uh, thank you, boys. It was a real treat being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>